One day I, we were changing magazines and I looked up and there was the camera operator, Bob Thompson, leaning over the top of the camera. And he was quite short and he had glasses and he was very experienced and he was very nice. And I was just standing waiting and, and I said, hi, Bob. Well, you, well, you know, well, you look very worried. What do you think about? He said, well, I'm just thinking, he's, uh, I don't know how the hell you stuck. Oh, I thought, that's, that's not quite what I meant. So I said, why? He said, well, you know a bloody thing about this business, do you? Now, I'd been in it for five years. So I said, well, what don't I know? He said, it'd take too long to tell you. And I said, will you tell me? And so Bob Thompson told me. He told me how the film went through the gate. He told me how the boom went. He told me where the lights were. He told me about a 2K, an inky dink. He told me every damn thing I had to know about the movies. My own technicians, mine, <laughs> my mates, not my directors, because they didn't know. I never found an English director that did. You're an actor who, you, I think you've said, doesn't require an audience in, in the strict sense. Oh, no, that, God forbid, no. That, uh, in a way, cinema is a much more preferable medium for you. Well, cinema is, is much more exciting because, I've said before, you make, it's something you're making technically together. And th the thing I have emphasized very strongly in my last book, as you know, is that most actors do not realize that that little beast and that little beast photograph your mind. And if there is nothing in your mind at the time that that is working or that is working, then no one is at home and you can just as well play pussy. It doesn't matter. Um, How do you mean pho photograph your mind? Uh, it photographs thought. Thought. The camera is capable of photographing thought. The best example of all, apart from me, because I've suddenly discovered that I do have some kind of thought in the end, I'll, you know, uh, is Marilyn, who had no thought whatsoever in her mind, but she had. Way down there at the bottom, Miss Munro was quite... Well, I mean, she has become the legend of the, of the century, almost. And the camera found what she was doing and what she was thinking. Watching her on the floor, you would inch yourself away with misery and grief, because you thought, crikey, what's she doing? She's doing nothing, and she's dreadful. She's plain, and she's got spots, and... Where's the magic? And the magic was there the next day on film. And you just drain blood when you saw it. So it her. is internal. It's an internal thing, and this is the essence of concentration, of course. And without concentration, without the absolute tightness of concentration, here in your head, nothing works on the screen. You can walk through a part, and nearly everybody I ever see does. Sometimes there's a magical moment when you find some actor who's not walking through, and it, the camera picks him. But that's capricious, and so is that one. They're both capricious, the cameras precious because they can hate you and you can do your nut and they don't want to record it but if you can establish a up or a love affair between yourself and the lens and I'm flattering myself perhaps that I do I don't know maybe I don't they will do everything in their power to help you but you've got to be thinking and you've got to know what you're thinking about and if you go to pieces forget it, it doesn't work the earlier films I mean, there were some that were accomplished um, you're famous for having shot Jack Warner. Um, oh, yes, Blue Lamp. And then you moved to a very successful series of films, um, which were the Doctor films. Mm. When you were working in what many people might consider unremarkable cinema, um, were you striving to do your best within those circumstances, or did, were you not all that conscious that it was unremarkable cinema? Now look here, let's get one thing absolutely straight. All I've ever been in the cinema, or in the theatre, or in my books, is an entertainer. Nothing more and nothing less. That's all I am. And anything I do, I do to the depths of my gut. I would never, as I said, cheat anyone. I never considered those films as crappy or stupid or whatever they were. They were, they were there to pleasure people. They were there to pleasure people who came to see us. You don't, you don't betray that faith. You don't betray people that have staggered miles in a, in a snowstorm or something to get to the movie to see you. You, you. you do everything you can. And people met and married in movies that I made. 
They dated a whole world. I have three or four generations of people that I am directly responsible to. I couldn't possibly say that I, I did anything more than do the best of, uh, you know, the best thing I could do, the highest point of my ability, and never once to look down on it. I never, I couldn't do. But and, and I loved the <clears throat> cinema too much anyway. That was another thing. It was growing, growing, growing. Mm. When I found that a uh, crew was working, and that was working, and that was working, and how it worked, and this was working, the boom, then gradually all these wonderful things it, it came in, and I was being taken in again into a force like I had been in the army and producing something at the end of it. But I was very, very proud of those films. I mean, some of them were rubbish, I admit. But people like rubbish, you know. People don't want all...